Thanks for coming on, Jazz. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're looking quite good today. <laughs> I try. I try my best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure, bro. Yeah. So anyways, why don't you, I guess for the people who don't know you, why don't you kind of give everyone like a quick 30 second elevator pitch? Yeah. Yeah. So I've been a realtor for about uh, four and a half. This is my fifth year. Started back in 2019 when the market was really down and then joined a G, uh, joined a team, started working from there. And then here I am. We have about 20 people on our team now. Nice. Yeah, I, I didn't realize you've only been doing it for like four years. Yeah, I get that a lot. And that is because the training and the education and the knowledge that I've gotten over the period of four or five years, my mentorship has been really, really strong. And that's where it comes from, where at this point now I can mentor other agents as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mandeep says you're a big self-improvement guy. You're kind of rubbing off on him, so. Manifesting, man. Um, I ask this question to everybody. If you're sick or if you gain weight, you're like, okay, let me change my diet or let me have medicine. Now what's going on up here? What are you doing about it? If you're not, if, you're, if your mental health is not there, what are you doing to improve it? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to invest in yourself? I'm a big believer of that. I invest in a lot of courses. I invest in um, having mentorship, big believer. It's expensive, but big believer in that. And that's where you see results. Yeah, 100% agree. Uh, like Drew and I, we went to a conference in Vegas about real estate photography. I mean, believe it or not, they actually yeah, have yeah. conferences for things like that. And uh, yeah, totally blew my mind. So with that said, like who have been some of the influences and mentors that have impacted you in a positive way? Right. So back in 2019, I was a solo agent for the first six months and then I joined Paul's team. At that point, it was called Pro Real Estate Team. Now we call it Elevate Reality. Paul has been a big, uh, big factor in my life in terms of improving my mental health, my mindset and learning the business the way I did. Um, second person I would say, and it's funny because I used to watch a lot of um, real estate TV shows. And while I was studying for my exam, my wife used to be like, why don't you just study and stop watching TV? And I'm like, you have no idea how this is helping me. So Ryan Serhant has been a big help subconsciously just walking his, uh, watching his shows um, million dollar listing new york selling like sir hand and seeing him go from zero to one thousand now it's amazing and he is i would say my biggest motivation if he can do it i know i can do it okay yeah yeah i'm, I'm pretty familiar with ryan sir uh haven't dove very deep into it but what about a guy like grant cardone Grant Cardone is, I think he's doing finance and real estate at the same time. I can't really say. Like relate to him. Relate in the same to way. him in a sense, because he's not yeah. an active realtor, right? So yeah. he's not, he's more into the investing side of things. Whereas Ryan Serhant was a real estate agent and now he has a team, now he has a brokerage. So I can relate more to him as compared to Grant Cardone. But again, he's doing great stuff like his philosophy, his mindset for that, I'll give him thumbs up yeah I used to think he was a bit much like he's just all like in your face it's got too much energy but then I saw him on uh, undercover billionaire yeah and that's when I was like oh yeah this guy's actually legit yeah yeah I haven't followed him very closely but from what I've seen it's more about how to manage your money where to put your money and again, those TikTok people was like yeah I called uh, Boeing I want a jet and I got a jet and my accountant was like what the hell like stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So no, um, Ryan Serhan is my guy. Like I religiously follow him. And then now in Toronto, some of the big agents over there, they started a new group over there too. It's called uh, BAM, Broke, Ag Broke Agent Media. This guy used to be an individual agent. Now he's <laughs> collaborated with a few other agents. And now the value that they're adding is insane. I just uh, signed up for that course invested um, a few hundred bucks in that as well and uh, we'll see how that goes okay yeah what other courses have you bought that have, that you found really helpful like I I heard Ryan Serhant sells a course that's like ten thousand dollars I could be wrong but like have you invested in that yes so he's got different courses depending on how much access you want to him so the course that I've done is called selling like Serhant it's basically it gives you the blueprint of how to be successful as an agent 
and then you can keep adding courses if you want to uh, get into branding if you get into marketing if you want to get into how to build a team you keep adding on to that and it's a subscription that you pay and then you have access to all his templates all his um, scripts and whatnot but if you want access to him it's close to 10 grand yeah you're right okay. i don't have that yet okay eventually i will and then you also get access to go meet him in new york spend a day with him at his office so eventually it will happen i know some of the agents out in calgary have done that and um it's been really good for them yeah uh, so do you guys have an elevate team in calgary too we don't but we've got partners over there that we can partner up so yeah <clears throat> with real broker the brokers that we are with we are cloud brokerage so basically we're in four provinces in, in canada and literally every other state in mm -hmm. in the u.s so if you're like jazz i want to buy a property in new york can you help me i personally can't but i will have a partner that can help you so whoever i pair you up with will be an extension of my service to you if that makes sense so same goes for calgary as well even though i'm licensed to sell in alberta I won't do it because it's not fair to my client because I don't know the market. Yeah, and it's also kind of not fair to you too because you'd have to spend so much time driving back and forth, right? I mean, potentially some people Depending. some people do it for the commission, man. I'll tell you this: it happens all the time, even if they're not qualified to help you out. You go sell a five hundred thousand dollar house over there, you make what ten grand, and. If you even have to make a couple trips, it's worth it, but you're not doing your client a favor. So I won't do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, A, you're not doing your client a favor, but B, there's, if you're making all those trips back and forth, there's the opportunity cost of just doing some real estate transactions in Edmonton, right? That's 100%. kind of where I was getting at. 100%. 100%. Yeah. But yeah, I, I see what you said. I see what you said. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like two-sided, so it doesn't really work for you in both ways, but... Uh, so you said you did real estate by yourself for the six months and then you did the team afterwards. So what was it, what was it like kind of by yourself for the six months? It was terrible. It was, I was lonely. I had no idea what to do. <clears throat> there was, so the thing is when people think that they want to be a realtor, this is my biggest question to them. What does that mean? What do you want? Because when you study for your exam, they don't teach you anything. All they teach you is how to stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. the do's and don'ts right so you've passed both your exams you join a brokerage now it is very important that you join a good brokerage it comes down to how they train you what processes do they have in place what systems do they have in place and that's where either you win or you lose so when i joined a specific brokerage um i didn't have any training i don't know how to write an offer i don't know how to negotiate i don't know what terms are conditions are it was really hard for the first six months. Still staying at that brokerage, I met Paul. Paul was a part of that brokerage too. And we just had a 30 minute conversation and he told me about his team and whatnot. And I'm like, what do I need to do to come over? <clears throat> so Paul said, I can't. And I'm like, why? He's like, I have a waiting period. I have people on the wait list. I was like, okay, what's the waiting period? He's like six months. I go, right, can I be on the list? He's like, yeah, absolutely. So got on the list one day i get a call from him he's like jazz i had a feeling when he called me he's like jazz i'm ready are you good to go i'm like 100 percent. when do i start he's like tomorrow is your training so i'm like okay so my training started um about how to write well I, i've written a couple of offers before then i got, got some help from other agents but that's where the game changed then it became how you talk to people over the phone um how do you run your crm how do you do marketing? How do you build yourself as a brand? And like just kept building up from there. And me and him, we used to have one-on-one -on -one conversations about how are you feeling? How are you feeling about real estate? How are you feeling about doing this right now? Yeah. Right, because coming from doing two deals in six months was bad, right? Because my expenses were more than the money I had coming in. So, having those consistent conversations kept me sane in the head and again when i was sane in the head going back to what i said mental health i was able to do what i what i was what i really wanted to do so get the sales in build my relationships and then just kept building up from there so biggest difference is you need to have a mentor that can guide you in the right direction have someone on your side that's already done what you're trying to do 
do not reinvent the wheel. You can add your touch to it, but the process of success is the same. So that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds really dope. Like I know, uh, it, I'm actually excited. Is he going to be at this meeting today? He will. Okay, he will. yeah. He's going to be here. Everyone says good things about him, I swear. But yeah, that's like a critical thing is when you uh, talk to someone, you're like, how confident are you in your ability to write an offer? How confident are you in your ability to pick up the phone and, and handle this situation or handle that or something, right? So you, you said it was a six-month waiting period. So was it, did you have to wait six months from the day you were licensed? Or did you go six months by yourself and then bump into him and then wait another six months after that? No. So he was running a platform in that brokerage, which I wanted to be a part of. So we just met, I think, <clears throat> third or fourth day when I got licensed. And we just clicked. Yeah. And then it was like, hey, I want to come over. He's like, I've got a waiting period. But Jazz, stay in touch with me. And I'm like, I will. And what I did was, again, I don't know if he really meant it or not. I was like, I'll take you up on your word. So what I did, every time I wrote an offer, I was like, Paul, can you check my offer? Like, even though I was not on his team, you told me you're going to help me regardless. So here, I'm asking for help. Mm -hmm. And then I think that was something that he liked. And he's like, hey, this guy is a man of his word. I will take him on. So yes, it took me about six to seven months from the day I became a realtor to I, from, yeah, I became a realtor, ended up joining his team. So it was about six to seven months, I would say. And then joined his team. It's about a three month training period, like the transition period from a solo agent to a team. And also have changing your mentality from an employee to an entrepreneur. Yeah. The biggest challenge. Like forget about everything else. Forget about everything else. Like I was doing the nine to five. I was making decent money, made the choice to take the jump to get into real estate. The biggest challenge is again, it's in here. You were nine to five, you were told what to do. Now you ask, you ask people, why do you want to be a realtor? I want to make my own hours. I want to be in control of my own schedule. My follow up question, are you good at that? Are you good at time management? Are you good at making your own hours? Yeah. Do you know how to put, make your schedule? And do you know you'll, if you'll be successful in that? So again, that happened to me and I'm like, what do I do now? So that's where, again, all the guidance and the mentorship comes into place. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. Um, I mean, I mean, forget about just real estate for a second, but uh, I mean, if you think about it, a lot of people who don't get, not just get into real estate, but just like business in general, say the same things like, oh, what, I want to make my own hours. I want to, I want to be on vacation three months of the year and I want to, I want to travel the world while I, yeah, uh, just work on my laptop, but it's really just not not that simple, right? So, oh, hundred percent, it's not. This guy in uh, in Ontario I follow, and he's like, the first three years, work like a servant. You're a servant to your business, and if you cannot dedicate X number of hours to your business, don't get into it. Mm -hmm. Another question I ask my team, I'm like, so I'll give you two hundred leads, okay? How much time are you willing to invest? Again, not spend, invest into those leads to get the answers that you're looking for. And the only answer I'm looking for is as long as it takes. I don't want you to tell me three hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours, uh-uh. If your answer is as long as it takes, you'll survive. Otherwise, you will not. The failure rate is extremely high in this industry, extremely high. Yeah, I think it was like 89% in two years Yeah, of the people who sign up don't make it to your number two. Yeah, because they're signing up, watching Selling Sunset and social media, and then they're like, I want to be a realtor, I want to sell homes, I want to look cool, I want to drive a fancy car. Yeah. But behind the scenes, I don't think they know what goes on. They don't know how many times we're asked to F off, right? When you're calling, when people sign up on our website and we give them a call, how many times we've been told, hey, don't bother me. So it's, it's a struggle, man. It's, it's a grind, but you gotta do it. If you really wanna run your business like a business, you gotta do it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go back into like the, the lead gen part in a second, or remind me if we even get off track, but uh, 
you had mentioned earlier that you, you said you're, you're switching your mindset from more of like a nine to five or to more of like owning your own business. So what was kind of like your mindset going into real estate and why did you make the jump? Because it almost sounds like it was implied that you, you kind of had maybe like false expectations jumping into it or? Well, I was an IT recruiter before. So I was recruiting for IT com well not IT companies like the big uh, Fortune 500 companies so RBC, Scotia Bank stuff like that so we were helping their IT initiatives and then there came a day where I was like I've hit my cap what do I do now? Um, my reporting manager at that time I went to her and I was like what's my next step and she's like I will let you know next month I will let you know so my personality is I can't stop. If I reached somewhere, I have to grow. And then I, I saw my growth stopped. Money was okay, but I was not being challenged. And I was getting bored. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, what do I do next? I've always had the entrepreneur mentality because back in India as well, we had a bunch of businesses. I was helping my father run those businesses as well and learning from him. So you can say I had on the job training on how to run the business. So again, coming back to over here, I'm like, hey, what do I do? Which does not require a lot of investment looked into stuff, real estate, I was always fascinated with it, jumped into it. The funny thing is, I didn't plan on starting it so early um, than I did. So I wanted to wait a little bit, still have my job and do my studies. Build a nest egg? Yeah, but I just couldn't do it no more, man. I just could not do that nine to five and I'm like, screw it, I'm done. I had a bunch of money saved, I was like, fine, I'll be fine for the next year but I'm done, I'm gonna just focus 100% on real estate and go all in. Yeah, what was kind of like the TSN turning point as to when, because you said you wanted to wait a little bit longer, right? Like did something happen at work? It did, and uh, I was uh, up for a promotion. So I was an IT recruiter, I was up for a promotion to an account manager, and I got a really bullshit answer. <laughs> and then I, and again, I'm, I'm a man, I ask why, what does that mean? And the answer that I got from my account manager was, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just the messenger. I'm like, what does that even mean? She's like, this. And I'm like, all right. Well, so the same. Put me in touch with the other guy then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wasn't getting answers. I wasn't getting anywhere. Um, I hate to say it. Maybe it was because of my color. And again, I was reading between the lines. I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. So the very next day, well, actually the very next day, the same day, I went back to the office, I wrapped up my stuff, and the next day I gave my two weeks. The moment I handed over my two weeks, the only response I got was, okay. I kid you not, within 15 minutes, I was escorted out of the building. Like really? exactly how you see in the movies. I was escorted out of the building, to the parking lot. Put your stuff in a box. 1000%. Yeah. Good thing I had already packed up a lot of my stuff the day before, so it wasn't a lot, but yeah, I was escorted out to the parking lot, went there, my car, I drove outside, two people were standing outside, Jazz, can I have your parking pass? I was like, there you go. I went home, I went to the movies, I saw a movie, chilled, and that was it. That was it, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so yeah. you just wrapped up your real estate course real quick? Or did you already have that's, your license at No, that? I didn't. I just enrolled in it. Like I think I enrolled about a month ago before I decided to quit my job. And um, I was about three months in and um, I was diagnosed with some gallbladder issues. So my doctor was like, you have to get it removed. So had my gallbladder removed, that took about two months of recovery. I wasn't able to study. And then after that, um, yeah, I think it took me about six to seven months. October 1st, 2019 is when I became a realtor. And I think I quit my job, it was around April-ish in 2019. Okay, yeah, so, so a little bit of a lag there. Yeah, so during that time, I had my surgery, mental health wasn't doing the best, I did whatever I could. And then 2019, got into the business. Yeah, it's crazy. Did you grow up in India? Because I actually thought, well, even Mandeep thought that you actually were from here because no, no. your English is so good and you don't really sound like you have, like you sound like you grew up here kind of, right? But it's, I know you just mentioned funny. that you helped yeah. your dad with some businesses out in India. Yeah, so I get that a lot of time. And, and the thing is, a lot of people don't really, really realize India is just not a place where people don't speak English. Like India's got over 93 languages. 
And believe it or not, I went to a boarding school. It was a Catholic boarding school. I was not allowed to talk in Hindi or Punjabi at all. The only language I was allowed to talk in it was English. Okay. So, yes, I was born and raised in India. I moved to Canada in 2012 as an international student. I did my post-graduation in uh, international business in Kamloops, BC, and then moved here to Edmonton in 2015. Then I had a bunch of jobs. I was uh, working at Enterprise as an assistant manager, and then IT recruiting, and then this right here. Yeah, already. Yeah, man. That's, that's crazy. So. Yeah, it's been a long journey. A good journey, though. Yeah. It's a good journey. So you, you have just uh, the one brother, right, Rav? And do you have, like, sisters, too? or? No, just me and him. He's in uh, real estate now, too, trying to build his business up, build his brand up. So, yeah. Very proud of him. Trying to be like his brother? I don't know. We'll find <laughs> out. <Yeah. laughs> we'll find out where that journey takes him. Well, he's doing well. Yeah. He's doing well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I understand he's on the team. And I guess, like, speaking of the team, we, we talked about uh, the, the lead gen and stuff. So you guys have, like, a pretty good lead gen system, right? We do. We, we have a few systems that we get our leads from. So, again, um, website being the biggest one. But we've got other marketing stuff that we do. Um, that are can't really say on the camera but there's a bunch, bunch of stuff that we do that brings the leads in okay yeah yeah fair enough we'll well i'll, I'll, we'll I'll keep that a secret in like briefly if i have to say like a lot of uh, facebook ads and a lot of google ppc how we run them is very different and again jared to be very honest in today's world getting leads is easy getting quality leads is hard even that is easy now oh the problem is I wouldn't say the word problem. The challenge is, do you know how to convert them? Right. So you need to train people on how to work them. 1,000%. So I get calls from agents all the time, right? Social media and whatnot. And they're like, Jazz, I want to be on our team. I was like, okay, what are you looking for? Leads. Talk to me about it. What do you mean by leads? Oh, I want leads. Uh, I want them to join a team that can give me leads. It's like, got it. And uh, have you worked with leads before? No, but I know I can do well. All right, talk to me. Let's do a role play quickly here. I'm a buyer. You're calling me qualify me and that is it and they're like uh, uh, uh. so the, the challenge here is everybody wants leads do you know how to convert them do you know how to overcome those objections what do you say when someone tells you hey I'm not looking thank you so much do you just hang up the phone or do you have a follow-up question to that I'm a big believer of asking open-ended questions yeah like 1000% what's your why what's your motivation why are we doing this you're telling me that you were so bored that you signed up on my website and gave me all your information? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the moment you signed up, I call you 10 minutes after, you're telling me you're not looking? Come on. You know what I mean? So how do you, how do you word your conversation around that? And at the same time, how do you sound confident that you don't sound salesy and you don't sound pushy? Yeah, you, you want to sound assertive. There's, there's, a, there's a fine line. Fine line to walk, right? It's a balance right there. Yeah. Like you want to help them. You ought to be that advisor, that consultant. But at the same time, you've got to get those answers. If you don't have those answers, you cannot help them buy or sell. Yeah. So when people immediately say not interested, like what's, what's kind of your go-to response? Like when I sold cars, uh, when people would say not interested, I'd be like, oh, not interested in what? And then like it doesn't work every time, like, like everything doesn't work every time, but they would kind of stumble around and be like, uh, I'm not interested in, in this. I was like, oh yeah, no worries, but we have, we have this, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I mean, um, if people's not interested, my biggest question is, not a problem, what changed? And they're like, uh, my daughter's not going to school anymore. I wanted an apartment for her, as an example, right? Yeah. Makes sense. When would she be going back to school? in the next six months. Would you still want me to continue to send those listings so you are aware of what's happening in the market? Yeah, sure, no problem. All of a sudden, the guard is down, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm not just telling you, hey, buy an apartment, buy an apartment, buy an apartment. It's like, I want to understand what your situation is. Mm -hmm. And I get it, you're not ready right now. That doesn't mean you won't be ready in the next three, four, six, eight, ten 10 months. And again, Jared, believe me or not, I mean, we have leads on the system, or let's not call them leads, like people that I'm working with, that I've started working on two years ago, and I just close on them now. Yeah, yeah it's a process. It's a process, it's a relationship that you build throughout the process. A lot of people will be, call me when you're ready. 
But what you're forgetting is Edmonton is a market where 80% of the people are first-time homebuyers. If you tell them, call me when you're ready, they don't even know what that means. Yeah. A first-time homebuyer does not know what that means. So you've got to hold their hand and walk with them. Is it a lot of work? 1,000%. But I promise you this, if they're happy with you, the amount of referrals that you're going to get is going to be insane. Yeah, and there's 4,500 realtors or something like that. I like, think who's to say that they're not clicking on someone else's Google ad or someone else's Facebook ad, right? I'm glad you brought that up because the stats are, if somebody's signing up on your website, they've signed up on five other websites as well. And that's just average, right? Yes, and yeah. people don't understand the data that you get on my website is the same data you would get on any other real estate website. It's coming all from realtor.ca. Mm -hmm. How we've laid it out and the information that we provide other than the listings is different, but the data is just the same. And it's called the speed of response. So you sign up on my website. If I don't call you in 10 minutes, I promise you this, some other realtor will. And then yeah. it goes from there. It goes from there how you build from that point. So how do the leads get distributed amongst the 20 or so people on your team? Is it literally just the, the first person to grab it gets it? No, it's a roster system. Okay. Like whoever's name comes in, that person gets it and so on. So we also have <clears throat> an internal uh, ISA. Basically, uh, she makes a lot of calls for us as well and qualifies them. And then whoever is in that 90 day or 120 day period, they're transferred over to the realtor. So we have a really, really robust system about bringing in leads and also qualifying them at the same time. Oh, okay, yeah. And then again, it depends on um, the age and how good they are to close them. So every Friday, I run a meeting for two hours on how to make phone calls. It might seem redundant, but the growth that we've seen and the conversion that we've seen after having those trainings, is just, it blows my mind. Like I, I get the agents coming to the jazz the lead was uh, telling me that I'm not interested anymore. And all I said was, why? Was like, I would never in the world would have thought to ask someone why, because I was so scared. Like, yeah. why? What changed? I'm not interested. What does that mean that you're not interested? Yeah. And you, you don't want to sound combative either when you ask why. Yeah. Because that's, that's probably the, the bigger fear than just asking why. Because if, it's all about like how you say it, right? Because if you just your last, if you ask why, it, it sounds really weird. But yeah. if you just say it kind of casually, like, oh yeah, no worries. Like, what changed? One hundred percent. To your point, right? Yeah. And you have to mirror the energy that you're getting from the person on the phone. If someone's like, "Hey, how's it going?" You're not gonna be like, "Hey, how's it going?" You won't talk like that. Yeah. You have to mirror your energy, right? And you're, if the person you're talking to has to feel comfortable with you to put that guard down. Yeah. The other um, icebreaker, the biggest icebreaker we have on the phone calls is, are you a first time home buyer? 80% people say yes. And the moment they say yes, it's like, okay, how can I help? I love working with home, first time home buyers. Congratulations on taking this big step in your life. Do you know how it works? Yes, no. 90% of people say no. no. Yeah. The other word that I use a lot in my conversations is, would you find it valuable if I sit down with you and I go through the whole process? It's, I'm not saying, hey, can you come down to my office and we can sit and chat? No, no, I'm making it about you. Would you find it valuable? Will you find value in me investing my time with you, explaining the process so when you are ready, you make an informed decision about the property that you're gonna buy and invest so much money in? Mm -hmm. And people, a lot of people say yes. Yeah. People in the right mind say yes. Like, because I'm not gaining anything from you. I'm not charging you for my time. I'm giving you knowledge for free. All I'm doing here is trying to build a relationship with you. Right? Yeah. The way you, you make it sound too sounds so natural too. You have to. You have to genuinely care. Yeah. There are so many people out there that do not care and they're running for the chasing the commission. That's the problem. You chasing the wrong thing because one day it's going to come to an end. <clears throat> you take care of the people, the money will follow you. Mm -hmm. If you're chasing something, it's going to run away from you. 
take care of your people. Money is a byproduct of taking care of your people. I promise you that. It doesn't matter which industry, which business you're in. Customer service and being honest and genuine will put you 10 steps ahead of anybody who's chasing money. Try and test it multiple times. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, uh, I kind of learned that lesson at the car dealership too. I remember the, as, as I'm sure you could imagine, the, the car dealership trainings were all about like- I worked in oh, car dealership. Oh yeah, enterprise, right? Or no, even uh, when I was doing my, uh, sorry to cut you off there, man. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, when I was in TRU, so when I was in BC, I worked in White Rock uh, for GM. I that I took it up as a summer job. I knew I was I was all right in sales. I was like, hey, let's go sell cars for six months. Took one semester off, make some money, and it was all right. So I, I know the car industry. Like, you gotta walk the lot. You gotta see if someone's walking. You gotta go to them. Like, I hear you, bro. Yeah. How did you find that? Did did you? Because I I remember the the training was kind of like uh, when they say this, say this, but they didn't teach you about like like how to say things or like how to really care about the clients or it was it's not that the training was bad i guess it just it just really lacked the component to which you just talked about there was no value add right it was like you gotta hit your goals you gotta hit those numbers to make your commission again yeah. chasing commission 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 like think about this way the the amount of people that are in the car industry how long do they stay at one dealership they're moving around all the time yeah i think I think like half of people don't survive three months. No. And then if you do, you just you just get pigeon tossed from car dealership to car dealership, yeah. hoping and praying that something might change, right? Yeah. Like you gotta do the same things over there. You still have to cold call like people that have bought cars from you in the past. You call them, hey, do you wanna sell your car? This is how much I might be able to get you. Do you wanna bring your car in for an appraisal? They come in, you do the whole process of about giving them the numbers and then back and forth. Hey, this is what my manager offered you. No, I want this. You go back to your manager, then you come back in, right? Yeah. Like even now, like when I have to buy a car, I hate, I hate going to the dealerships because I know I have to go to the whole thing again. They're going to coach me on something that they think I don't know. Like, you know how you say this? You can't bullshit a bullshitter. You can't sell a salesperson. Like, what are you trying to tell me? Like, you're trying to tell me that, so you go to car, uh, car dealership. They're like, hey, this is what you pay. And I was like, uh-uh, I'm asking how much is the car for? but this is what the payment is. I was like, I understand, but tell me what the exact number is. The rate or the, yeah. Yeah, like the how much, what's the principal amount, right? So it's stressful, buying a car is stressful. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, man, you gotta do what you, you gotta do, what you gotta do, right? Yeah, speaking of cars, uh, I heard you have like an Audi RS7 or? An RS5. RS5. An RS5. RS7 would be probably my next one. Okay. Or, or a BMW M5 competition. I know before 2035, before this government decides to take away all naturally aspirated cars, I probably want to get a V8. Because right now I've got a V6, it's, it's decent. It's got a lot of horsepower in it, but yeah, I, I want to get a V8 before all this happens. Nothing against electric car guys, but to me it's just a toy car. Yeah, yeah, what are your thoughts on, yeah guys, what are your thoughts on the whole uh, electric car thing in general. I know a lot of people are kind of divided on that because on one end you're 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 just polluting the earth to make these, these really really great batteries, right? Yeah. I mean a, a good example. So I think about when we had this um minus 45 minus 50 and we got an alert from the government that our Alberta grid is about to shut down. So turn off your electricity, put yeah. stuff down. And I'm thinking you want us to run electric cars when our grid can't even handle that. Like, where do I charge my car then? One of my colleagues, one of my team members, um, he forgot to charge his car and his car was parked outside and his batteries froze. He took it to multiple superchargers. He towed them to multiple superchargers, did not start. He had to tow his car for a few days to, to, so that the batteries could come back up. Mm -hmm. Would that ever happen to you? Or sure, if the battery went off in a natural, no, no, normal car, you'd change your battery. 300 bucks, the battery's done, or you take it to a gas station, you fill it her up, and you're fine. My biggest thing is, I love the sound of an engine. I love the sound of an exhaust. You, a Tesla can't do it, an electric car can't do it. It doesn't do it for me at all. Yeah, it feels great, there's zero lag. You put, you put your foot to the pedal, it goes. But someone who is an enthusiast will not appreciate it. 
Like, if you have to put a gun to my head and be like, you're driving a Tesla, you're not driving something else, sure. But I'm not doing it otherwise. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing it otherwise. <laughs> yeah. I like my cars loud. Yeah. Yeah. My, my dad works in the oil field. He drives out the oil sites and he has to pretty much keep his truck running all day because it, it's cold outside and he's got yeah. his laptop put up and he, he's kind of like the, the boss of the, the rig site. And so uh, he, he was at Christmas, he was talking about these uh, electric trucks or whatever and how we're gonna switch from carbureted to, to electric. Right. And he was like, how am I supposed to just, you know, pull up into the middle of nowhere and just sit in my truck all day and do my work? And you know what I said to him? You'll need to, to power with a gas power generator. <laughs> Doesn't matter how you twist it. I think they should have invested in hydrogen as compared to electric. Because hydrogen is more renewable than whatever lithium batteries they're producing. Yeah, I'm not super uh, in the know on the science, but is that basically nuclear hydrogen or is that well, something different? It's a gas, right? Um, yeah. And then it, it channels like so the combustion the way the i don't know the exact word but how they make it it powers your car the same way a gas engine would but it's it's eco friendly hyundai i know is doing a lot of good things with hydrogen there are a few hydrogen trucks that are working up in the oil field as well because i have a friend who's doing that so if they invest in hydrogen that's a good bet i don't know if you saw the news i mean um, i don't even know if it's true but i read it online um a week ago, Toyota said we're not making any more electric cars. We're going to focus on hybrid, but not electric. For example, Camry, now that everybody loves driving, especially our cabbies, only comes in hybrid now. They could have gone full electric, but they haven't. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a debate. I know a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this. People that love Teslas and dri love driving their electric cars, but if you're an actual car guy, you'd appreciate a naturally um, aspirated engine. A gas guzzler, you'd appreciate a gas guzzler. My car is a gas guzzler. <laughs> On a full tank, I get 250 kilometers, but I also drive like an idiot, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so what's your life like kind of outside of real estate? I know you talked about the being a car enthusiast and stuff. Uh, I see your, your Instagram stories a lot. It seems like you, you work out a lot. I've made a big shift in 2024. Um, ending 2023, in 2023, I did not work out at all. 2024 was where I promised myself, I owe it to myself to make sure that I'm in the best physical and mental health possible. So that's where I started working out. And surprisingly, when you work out, your mental health gets better automatically. Mm -hmm. So my day in general looks like wake up early, go to the gym, come back home, have my breakfast, and then honestly, it's just work after that nonstop. Because once you have deals on the go, something's on fire. No deals are easy. So you gotta start dealing with that, then I come to the office, do my thing, train my agents, um, and then go on my own showings. And then by the time I'm done, like sometimes I do take out time within the day as well to do some stuff, because by the time I'm done working, half of the things are closed. So being in this business gives me a little bit of flexibility where I was like, hey, do not feel like working from two to four. I wanna go buy some shirts, for example. So stuff like that. And then um, over the weekend, I try to spend my time with the family, um, take things slow. I love watching movies. Um, probably watch, I go to the movies probably twice, thrice a month. It's, it's a way for me to shut down from the outside world. So I'm mm -hmm. just sitting there looking at the cinema. I like it. And then random car drives, man. It's like, okay, hey, haven't driven, uh, haven't gone for a long drive, let's just go. Doesn't matter where the road takes me, pick up a coffee and just go. Put my music on, zone out. It's perfect. Try not getting tickets, but yeah. Yeah, it sounds very peaceful. Sometimes, because you've got so much on the mind. You're taking care of so many people at once. Like if you've got, say, four or five deals on the go, you've got five, five families that you're taking care of. Then you've got to help out the people that you're mentoring. Then you've got stuff that you've got to do at home. Again, everybody has family things that they're dealing with. You've got to help, help out with that mentally. And all the battles that you're fighting inside 
Everybody has battles inside. People don't talk about it, but they do. So think about it as a whole. See how much do you have on your shoulders. And then you need time to actually process all of that stuff. It gets a, it, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And then one thing out of all of those things that you're managing goes out of equation. It disrupts your whole day. How do you manage that? How do you not let one thing affect your whole day? Like having that kind of mental strength, it comes with time. And that's where I want to invest more time in myself. Like I keep saying this to everybody and then people are probably sick of me by saying this. Invest in yourself. That's the best investment that you'll ever make. Doesn't matter if you're doing real estate or selling cars or selling shoes because that's something that nobody can take away from you. Yeah, is, is what you know and what you've done. Yeah. Yeah. Like even for yourself, right? I'm sure you're dealing with a lot of stuff and then you've got your business. You're also worried about, am I getting enough bookings? Am I, what am I going to do next month? Like how does 2024 look like for me? And then I'm dealing with my own stuff inside and then I've got family stuff. Like it's hard. Mm -hmm. And the society has made us men in a way that we're not allowed to show emotions. Yeah, or uh, kind of like let people know that we're, we're struggling. Yeah, we're yeah. fine. Ask any guy, hey buddy, how you doing? I'm doing good. Even though that person is fighting through, I don't know, depression or something on the inside. We haven't made it okay for someone to say, I'm not doing okay. Mm -hmm. Try saying that to someone, hey, I'm not doing okay. See what the response is because they'll be like, what? I don't even know what to say to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it makes some people uncomfortable too. 100%, like people talk about being honest. You're never honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean like the, the things that I, like if you were asking me like how I'm doing like right now, like the, the last three weeks that I've been in Edmonton, I, I've honestly like felt as good as I have ever felt. I don't know, I, I feel like just like moving to a new city, you can just kind of like reinvent yourself and uh, I, I literally, like just ask like Mandeep, I've just been like on the grind nonstop. Good man, good for you. And uh, yeah, it feels good. Some, I, I almost forgot like what the rush was like. Uh, like I remember at the car dealership, like you'd go and you'd like close like a really hard deal. It's, I kind of get like the same thing when I go to like a brokerage and then I uh, onboard like all the agents at the brokerage or, well not all of them, but uh, get like a deal in place or something like that. You're going out of your comfort zone to do all of that stuff and then you're winning and that's what success is. Yeah. Right? Not everybody's doing this. Um, in my past four, four and a half years, I've worked with a lot of people um, that do marketing like pictures and whatnot and not everybody goes out of their way to establish that relationship. And you're doing that so kudos to you and you're doing excellent work. Where you're gonna win, Jared, is even if you mess up, which you will, and everybody does, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be okay because you've got that relationship there. If somebody else messes up who have never met and they screw up on a listing or they do something, I probably won't have the same tolerance for them because there's no relationship there. Yeah, you don't know what their, uh, like what their character's like if they're even like willing to learn from things feedback or a lot of people don't take trust feedback. them yeah yeah great people don't take feedback they ego bro ego is something that takes everybody down yeah 100 percent. 100 percent. yeah do you do you find that you kind of have to like fight your own ego sometimes 100 percent. yeah i do too 100 percent, man like you try calling an agent who's been doing this for a very long time and like if let's say you want to show the listing or something that conversation is very different. Well, people that have been doing this for a while have egos. I also have to fight my ego when someone, I mean, two days ago, someone said, to this, said, said this to me, I don't think what you did was right. I was like, explain this to me, please. I know what I did was right, but the way he was talking to me, it did hurt my ego. So it happens, I mean, day in day out um, even when I am being trained as a mentor like again I wasn't born a mentor like Paul helps me how to be a team lead and how to be um, a good mentor I have to put my ego aside 
I have to put my ego aside. I was like, okay, what this guy is telling me, or what, who, whichever coach I'm talking to, what they're telling me is not because they hate me, it's because they want me to get better. It's hard. Does it happen all the time? No. But I do my best. Mm -hmm. There's certain times I do take things to my heart. Man, I'm human. I can't help that. Um, but I do my best. I try to, it's called check up from the neck up. Like, think about what they're saying take a pause and then process it before like when i didn't believe in all of this stuff try saying something to me like i would just snap at you like that bite my head off come at me <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> come at yeah. me so yeah um yeah big change man i think being in real estate money wise it's it's all right mentally it drains you, but you learn so much on how to manage that. Now, the stuff that I've learned just being in this business and how to deal with people and whatnot has helped me in my personal life and in my life in general. Yeah, I'm, I'm more I feel that. calm and collected and I have more patience. And I re actually wanna hear you out. Two things, again, this, this is like, I'm, I'm sharing stuff that I talk in my training. It's like, are you listening to understand? Are you listening to reply? Yeah. It's a big difference, right? If you're listening to reply, I would have an answer for you even before you finished what you were saying. Mm -hmm. If I'm listening to understand, I will let you finish, I will acknowledge it, and then I'll ask a follow-up question or I'll give my views on it. So a big difference. Again, that's a big part of how you can work leads as well. Yeah. I think the Dalai Lama said that there's like three levels of listening and i might even be totally butchering this but i think the first one is like just listening to the words right and then the second is like understand the meaning right and then the third is like making what you learned instinctual yeah yeah sounds about right it's pretty deep it is deep but if you sit down and you think about these things they're like why have we not ever thought about it before mm -hmm. and why are we only doing it now yeah. So, um, anyways, we, I think we got to wrap up here pretty quick. Mandeep's given us the okay. the, 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 the warning here. Has it been an hour already? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I guess so. What, what are we at for time? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're okay. a little bit past. Okay, we'll but, we'll uh, wrap it up. Yeah. So, what do you like about working with Quicksell? I, like, I know you kind of already touched on, uh, uh, like, the relationship and, and stuff like that. But uh, what, what do we do to make your life easier? Okay. So... Relationship is the biggest thing for me, number one. If I don't have a relationship with you, things are not so good. Okay, mm -hmm. so I have a good relationship with you. We've done a lot of business in the past. There were certain things that were not good and you took feedback well. That is number one for me. Mm -hmm. And you made it up to me. That was fantastic. You guys listen. Uh, one of my other favorite things is, I don't know if you call it a CRM or the prof where I have a profile and then I can download everything from there. What do you call that? Uh, yeah, it's just kind of like our, our, our portal. So yeah, so yeah. portal, yeah, that's the word yeah. I was looking for. So I love that. That way you, you're not sending me stuff in my Dropbox or you're not sending me stuff on my Google Drive. I have one place where I can go and I can download everything that I need. Yeah, you're not surfing through emails, looking through. No, I need to save my time. Yeah. <laughs> time is important. Mm -hmm. um, so that really helps me. You guys are really good at what you do. Love the pictures, love the HDR pictures, videos, everything that you're doing is great. And at the end of the day, if I don't like something, and you you know this, I will not keep it to me, I will tell you. Yeah, Cause yeah. we appreciate that. The thing is, Jared, and I, I know you appreciate this, and I, I appreciate this, that you take my brand seriously. Because mm -hmm. if I'm giving you feedback, hey, I don't like this because it doesn't resonate with my brand, and you fix that, it means a lot to me. So that's important because you are technically an extension of me. Correct. And if an extension of me is not doing what I want to do, it doesn't work, right? So in short, um, you guys have just been awesome. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys taking the feedback and actually working on it. Yeah. So, Thank you. That was like the of course. like the best review we've ever gotten. I mean, just the honest review here, man, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, man. So that's that. Thank you so much for everything you do. And thank you for uh, getting this podcast organized. I appreciate that as well. Yeah. 
yeah, and sorry we kind of had to, to shuffle it around. But, That's uh, all right, man. Shit happens. Life happens. Yeah. yeah. No, there are no hard feelings. Even even that day when he comes again, don't problem, man. That's okay. Two years ago, you would have called me. It was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the <laughs> like, fuck, bro? You know what I mean? Like, that would be like, bro. I drove all the way from downtown to south side. It comes to you and you're telling me it's not happening. Get your shit together. I was like, life happens, bro. Yeah. It's fine. Big deal. Right? So it's all good. Yeah. Sometimes we think things are a bigger deal than they actually are, right? They are, and in your uh, head. Yeah. Not to the real world. It's not. Yeah. In your head, it's, I don't know. It's, it's like a wall kind of erupted in your house. Yeah. Right? Well, anyways, I think we do have to get this thing wrapped up here. But uh, real quick, like for anyone that wants to find you to either join your team or buy and sell real estate, where can they find you? Just Google my name. That's okay. it. Jazz Alwalia, Google it. You'll get my Instagram, social media, Facebook, my website on there as well. Um, that's it. Or even if you go on Instagram, just Jazz underscore A and you'll find me. Perfect. All right. Thanks cool. so much, Jazz. Thank you.